Hey brothers and sisters, hope you're having a good day in the Lord. Uh, I just wanted to talk about something that's not really a, you know, I, I can't really say that it's the stuff that I would normally talk about, but I just would like to <clears throat> kind of help everybody with getting caught up in things and spinning your wheels and things that aren't really, uh, they won't really have an end to them, you know. Um, I see a lot of Christians kind of chasing Satan's tail around, like picking up all the mess that he's made. Um, and I want to say stay out in front of that, you know what I mean? You don't need to be, um, and that usually, that I'm talking about like the online community mostly. You don't have to be a... Uh, whatever they term them, like truther or, uh, you know, you have all these discernment channels and stuff. And, and, and honestly, truth online literally means nothing. Truth online doesn't mean anything because everybody says the same things. Everybody copies one another. Everybody, I, I could be on here right now, right? And I'm saying something to you. And it has no effect on you because it, um, everybody is something else when cameras are off or, or it's easy for you to read something on, uh, you know, an opinion online and there's strong opinions online. There's strong videos. There's strong, uh, you know, this is the truth. You guys are all being deceived and, and that is so oversaturated, especially the internet that, you know, videos don't really, uh, it doesn't really do much to somebody, you know? And so it, it's, it's all being caught up in this wheel of, of fakeness, you know? And I just want to say that live your life away from the internet, right? I share videos with you that, um, you know, just to fellowship or just to, just to help something that maybe I've gone through or that I've seen that, that would, would edify and encourage you. That is my gift from God to, to encourage and to edify, um, my brothers and sisters, you know, but stepping away from that, you know, my life isn't on YouTube. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what other channels are doing. I don't really care because that is, a life that anybody can can live is this life behind the keyboard which really doesn't mean anything w what do you do away from the keyboard right and so you, you can see a whole bunch of people discernment channels and, and fighting for truth and exposing people but it doesn't show the power of God it doesn't show you having discernment whatsoever you have all these kids and channels that will pull up a Kenneth Copeland or they go for the low hanging fruit or Joel Osteen, you know, and here goes 30 minutes of you sitting through and it, it's literally nothing but, you know, brain candy, junk food for the brain. It doesn't do anything to sit up there and just say, oh, you know what? And watch people shaking their head crazy, prophesying and then pausing the channel and saying, is this of, is this of God's spirit? Like, if you don't have enough discernment as a Christian that you can be deceived by that stuff, then honestly, I would check your entire salvation. I would check your entire salvation because that stuff is no brainers to, to be taking jabs at Kenneth Copeland and all these other people. It's been done a million times. Like move on. You're not saving anybody. The videos have been put out. Everybody that is following these people, willfully want to be deceived. The Bible says that they shall be deceived and going on deceiving others. So move on. Do you know how to give truth to other people? Do you know how to expound the Bible? Do you know how to speak from not what scripture says, not doctrine, but from personal experience, something that the Holy Spirit through his word has done in your life? Can you share your 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 faith just by your works and so what is your real life looking like and i want to warn everybody don't fall for youtube don't do not fall for everybody that has a platform to speak that aren't doing anything i could sit here right now and be as hyped as i want about you know 
red versus blue or about, you know, darkness versus light or about abortion or about, you know, Kenneth Copeland. But what does that do at the end of the day? It, it absolutely accomplishes nothing. Yet, you see, for the for the sake of views and for the sake of material coming in, these people have to make an excuse for why they get paid by YouTube and they have to say, oh, well, you know what I mean? We are, we are to to rebuke this openly and we are to bro you're just following into the devil's hands because he's just keeping you fed with all these fake news and all these fake channels and all this elevation worship and all this bethel music and all this hill song worship music and he's just keeping you spun and you're falling for it every time and you go oh man i needed a video here's something for a new video and you realize that you are literally playing on the same team as the devil that you are literally playing. Get away from your computer. Go out and share the gospel. You are not, uh, I am not a, a, a strong Christian because I could sit behind this phone right now while I'm driving home and make a video. I'm not strong because of that. Go to the street corner. Approach people in their sins. Convict them. Tell them to repent of their sins. Share the truth with other people. Be bold. Because you could be a discerner or a Christian person on YouTube, and yet you could just, it's the same with pastors. You know what I mean? They, they hide and they go, oh, my, that, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not, that's not my calling. Your calling is to share the gospel. Your, your calling is to, to give hope to the lost, to call sin for what it is. You, you know, it, it's sad that you could see a pastor be all brave in a pulpit, yet he goes outside and, you know, he, oh, I can't be seen with these people. I don't, I don't want to share. I don't, you do not have the heart of Christ. Every pastor, you should be the first people up for public hanging. <laughs> it's sad that younger people, look at D.L. Moody. Was he a preacher? Absolutely. Was he a pastor? Yes. He had Bethel, or Bethel. He had, uh, you know, Moody Church. He had the church. He had the Moody Tabernacle. Did he go out and, and save the lost? Yeah. Did he do it at midnight? Yeah. Did he chase a kid all the way from to this kid's bedroom and pulled him out and drag him to Sunday school? Yes. He was in the business of saving souls. Did all the other men of God? Yes, absolutely. But now we live here in this day and age where it's, the pastors are like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not that or a discernment channel or whatever you think you have and you say well I'm not that because that's not my gifting how convenient how convenient how convenient to be a truth or to sit up there and spend your whole life caught in something that you won't come away from and your excuse is oh you know I'm just exposing this it's already been exposed to you God called you out go Hopefully you didn't have to do it because somebody made a YouTube video. Hopefully you did it by searching the scripture. Hopefully you did it by trusting God. Hopefully you did it because you spent time with the Lord and he taught you and you sensed in your spirit like this is not right. This doesn't build. That is discernment. You got out. You got out. That's like Lot not leaving Sodom. But he having this revelation about how wicked it is, and yet he stays in Sodom, and, he, and rather than caring for him and his own, which God said, get out and leave, he stays behind and starts a blog and saying, oh, brothers and sisters, I've gotten away from this homosexuality. I've come out of this cult of Sodom and the wickedness, you know, come out. And, and his whole life isn't leaving with God. His whole life is staying where he loves to stay hanging around the same people he loves to hang around and saying well you know i'm gonna turn around and share truth and, and and watch out for the flock it's already been done get out and leave go go abraham didn't hang around the land of ur and saying oh i've heard the voice of god and this is in explaining what faith was like he left he left leave your life leave what you did before go Shut your mouth and just go. Discernment channels, shut your mouth and go share the gospel. Go. We don't need you on here exposing darkness. No, God will do that. The light will do that. The word will do that. Go. You spend so much time online. Go to the real world. Go to the... I would rather have you sharing the gospel, you know, and a lot of that's fake, but at least if you're having a camera along with you, I'd rather hear you and see you 
sharing in the active world with Christians or, or with non-believers, whatever. That is what's real. Anybody can sit here like I'm doing right now behind this and say, oh, you know, I, I love YouTube. But it's just drama. You're no different than the news. You have to keep making videos so every time something comes out, you're like, this is go to all these good fight ministries and and I can't even think of, you know, revealing truth or longing for truth or whatever these channels are. Go to them. See how many, how often they upload, how many videos they have to have. Why? Because they thrive on drama. They thrive on all this. Oh, this is the latest news that happened. And you're no different than, than Hollywood. You're no different than E! Entertainment. You're no different than TMZ. And because of you, you are, you are just causing stumbling blocks to young believers. You, you are just building the bath of blood up. You are filling it with just drama that people can't be convicted because of you sitting and reading the scripture. You're just playing into the, the pool of drama because you're getting a check from it, from YouTube. Because you're building up your brand and you act like you, you care so much about your followers and your subscribers and your Patreons and your people sending you Cash App and your people sending you PayPal than you do about making followers of Jesus Christ. You are the wolf in sheep's clothing. Because you're out this to, to make a name for yourself. You're out this to get paid. And it's called your ministry. Shut up. Go and save the lost. You care about these brothers? You send them money. Go to these people's houses that you're, you, you're trying to, you know, how many people do you keep in contact with that you're saying, you know, oh, I just want to care for the flock and just want to guard them. How many people are you going to pray for? How many people are you writing letters to? How many people have you gone to see? Or do you just sit around and act like you're doing them a service and they send you money on Patreon and say, because they're so brainwashed and, and they want to find truth and they want to find a good thing and they want to believe. And so they're, they're so ignorant that they say, oh, brother, I love the work that you're doing. Keep going. And then you build yourself up thinking that you're doing something for God. No. No, you're supposed to not let your right hand know what your left hand's doing or your left hand know what your right hand's doing, whatever the one it is. And yet you cannot make a move without, well, this is going to get me my views for the day. This is going to keep me relevant. And you're in the same algorithm of YouTube. You, you do the, the thumbnails. You do the shocked vases. You do the, did they just do that with an arrow pointing to something like cur off the curb ministries? And you know different than the world. You look no different. You use the same schemes, the same tactics. You've never come out. You are literally using the same tactics that YouTubers get to, to get views and you put it on yours to what? To get views. And your only excuse is, well, the more I get, you know, if I use these means, the more that I can get traffic and the more that I can share the gospel and congratulations. You're just like the church in the Western world. You have adopted means and music and dances and circuses and all this sort of devil's entertainment because you could say, well, if we can get more butts in the seat, they'll hear me preach. And the more that they can hear me preach, the more that I can save some. Shame on you for taking the Holy Spirit's job from him. Shame on you. So you know what I want for 2023? Silence. Let the Holy Spirit work. Pray. I pray for all you people on YouTube, for all of us on YouTube, that you spend more hours in 2023 praying for those people that are being deceived, praying for the lost, than you do actually talking. God bless you.